Hello and happy Thursday. I welcome back for another great discussion. Today I have a cool friend with me. I, I just said cool friend. She's a very yeah. cool friend. What can I say? <laughs> I try. Katie <laughs> Reed, who is also a licensed therapist and uh, all around cool gal. And uh, we're going to talk today about uh, how you're coping in COVID actually might not be doing you any favors. <laughs> I don't even know. How, I couldn't, I couldn't think about a word. We that can all. speak from experience too. So we've all been there. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. I, I, I think I put in the description, like my belief is I'm at, at the core of it. I'm always like, you do you like, you right. know, you best and you know what, what you need in this moment right. and you take care of yourself. But sometimes <laughs> I'm seeing now, cause we're like, I, I don't know. We're, we're over a month in. It's almost like yeah. a month and a half for a lot of people who started yeah. early. Yeah. Sometimes that coping isn't really doing us any favor. So yeah. we thought it would be great to have a, a chat about that today and talk about, okay, uh, what should we be looking out for? Oh, and Paul is with us. Hey, Paul. Hey, Paul. <laughs> He's the awesome. ultimate supporter. I just love him. That's so cool. He's super supportive to me too. So thank you, Paul. I know. <laughs> Katie, uh, besides being a cool chick, uh, can you share with the audience a little bit more about yourself? <laughs> sure, sure, sure. So I'm Katie Reed. I have been, I always say, I feel like I've been a licensed marriage and family therapist since the dawn of time. <laughs> it feels like a very long time ago that I got licensed back in California. Um, I've kind of done all the jobs in our field, right? So I've had have private practices in multiple cities. I have directed large community mental health programs and organizations. Uh, I've supervised over 40 interns clinically. I've taught grad school. So I love our field. I've been around our field a long time. I adore our field. Eventually, my love for our field and my need to have a more work at home position after I had children with special needs led me to become a consultant and a marketing strategist for other therapists because I had some marketing background. I knew what I was doing in the areas of copywriting and marketing and building websites and those types of things. So I started growing as a consultant and it became the perfect, perfect way for me to diversify my income, but also to be home with my kiddos. Cause like I said, I had kids with special needs and I needed to find a way that I could still work, still be part of the field that I loved, but change my life quite a bit so that I could also be home for them and part of their services and all of that. So that's what I did. Um, and so now I teach therapists how to grow their practices with my savvy practice program, which is super low priced, especially right now with COVID, because I want to help you guys get all the clients you need to stay afloat right now. And then I also teach people to do what I did in my clinician to coach program, which is for people who are ready to outgrow the office, diversify their income streams, and just go bigger and bolder with what how they want to serve the world. So those are the main things that I do. And I've uh, been buddies with Amber for a while, met her back early on when I was starting my consulting, and just always have so much respect for Amber and Melissa and their podcast and the work that they do. So I'm excited to be here. Awesome. Thank you. I know. And I realize we've never actually met in person, which feels I know, it's so sad. I, I, I actually don't believe that till we it's said it. It's crazy. I know. So, while you were talking, I was like, clearly this is COVID, right? Like, I, I don't know if you could hear, but my kids, I said, please don't be above my office. I'm going to do a live. And I think they're actually throwing metal objects onto the floor. So if you hear the banging, <laughs> I apologize, I everybody. <laughs> and mine are playing a video game and my six-year-old tends to like yell sporadically yeah. <laughs> when something happens in the game. So here we We're are. We're just keeping it real, people. Right. We're keeping it real. So <laughs> it's all we can do. Right. Um, but yeah, you and I had chatted back and forth and we were talking about this because I'm, I'm, I'm going to put out there what I was seeing and what I was kind of noticing that... Um, you know, on one hand, you know, I've been doing this series and interviewing people from like different areas or genres or industries. <clears throat> and we're talking about things you could be doing to like help, you know, help you cope better or kind of things that people are going through or things that you could do to kind of minimize your stress and, you know, that kind of stuff. And there's a lot of variants. My thing is always, if people actually watch the videos is I always say like, if you want to do that, right? But right. what I started seeing online, people who weren't talking about me, they were just something else. But these people are like, you know, 
I felt kind of shaming people who were trying to be productive during this whole thing and acting like, oh, you know, like this is so much we're going through and you shouldn't, you know, you don't have to be productive. And I was like, well, of course you don't. Because right. I mean, I don't know. I personally have those days where I just lay around. I refuse to get out of my pajamas for a couple of days. And right. I just want to like, I just want to watch movies all day long. Like I've openly said that. And I thought what was interesting is I agree. I think you shouldn't push yourself and put pressure on yourself to be productive in this. But I also think it's okay to be productive. And so I hate when people get so divisive. And so I was like, well, then I just want to talk about that. Yes, totally. <laughs> I want to talk about it because there are, you me. Yes. <laughs> yeah, I was like, there are some concerns in, you know, if I did that, like pajama thing, watching TV all day long, every day, I would end up depressed. Right. And, and that's what you and I talked about. And I think that's the one thing that we just have to sort of be aware of our own tolerance for it because everyone is so different, but I'm just like you, like, I will definitely feel overwhelmed, have the day. I love the idea of that super low pressure day where you're like, you know what? If I just stay alive today, it's enough. Like if I don't do anything else, if I eat popcorn on the couch all day long, that is just fine for today. But I know myself and I know that if I allow that to stretch into two or three days, I basically am mimicking depression in my behaviors. And therefore I start creating depression in my mood, in my attitudes, in all of the ways that I'm sort of interacting acting with the world. And I give my brain too much time to wander. <laughs> yes. And so that is at least for me what I find that when my brain has all that time to wander around and go into all those bad neighborhoods we have in our brain with anxiety and fear and worry and self doubt and all those things. When I am not being productive, I am basically just saying, hey brain, have at it. And I will end up depressed or I will end up anxious or I will end up just in a bad space that I don't want to be in. And I don't know about you, Amber, and I'm curious for you. I find for me, I feel very anxious right now. Like I'm so aware of my anxiety just going like this all day. And, you know, and it's exhausting to be in that state where every time you get a new hit of the news, you're like, <sighs> you know, all over again. Um, but I find for me, what works the most to help anxiety, it's either physical activity or anything creative. Like if I am using my energy in any creative direction, and this does not mean I'm like painting the freaking Mona Lisa. This <laughs> You're means, Picasso up exactly. over there. <laughs> <laughs> like this for me can be something so basic. I mean, creative in the moment might even just be making up some silly, like bouncing the ball game with my kids out back. It might be like updating some website copy that I've been working on. It might be going back and looking at something I did in the past and looking at it and saying, oh, how can I make that a little bit better? Like it might be super low level in terms of creative energy, but I have to actually be using my brain in a way that it's fully engaged in the task at hand. Yeah. And when I can do that, my brain doesn't have time to wander off into the bad neighborhoods. you know. <laughs> and so I find that I have to, oh yeah, Paul is saying, I'll pick up the guitar and pretend I'm Slash. See, that's awesome. <laughs> that's awesome. Well, I was cracking up with my kids the other day because yes, this crazy quarantine has made me discover TikTok, which I realize is for like 14 year olds. But <laughs> there are all these like hilarious dance tutorials on there of hip hop dance challenges. And I mean, as you can tell, I'm a very natural hip hop dancer. It's like in my jeans. Yeah, <laughs> like, yes. uh, first thing I think There's of. So much like <laughs> middle aged, you know, lady hip hop dancers out there like me. But no, there we are were, a lot actually. Yes. <laughs> but we were cracking up trying to do these like hip hop dance tutorials, and it's just ridiculous and silly, but it occupies your brain. It gets your brain out of that state and it gets you laughing. And just even that level of like silly creativity is enough to kind of boost, at least for me, to boost me up out of that. I just want to lay on the couch all day state. Absolutely. I don't know. What's it like for you? Yeah. And I, I think like the TikTok thing, my, my daughter got on it as well. And I, I agree. I think one, it's like physical activity. Cause like, I love having dance parties. Like we love having dance parties. Yeah. And then even my five-year-old now she has this dance routine that she learned on either TikTok or YouTube or something. And she's doing it all the time for us. And it's really cute, but it's, I agree. We're laughing. I mean, this is the thing there were, there were periods where I realized 
I haven't like laughed, laughed, not, you know, like a chuckle, <laughs> you know, but I haven't laughed out loud in a while. And yeah. that's like so depressing to me. Yeah. <laughs> and so yeah. every once in a while, I'm like, okay, I need to do something. And yeah, we have, it's silly, right? right. I agree. I feel, you know, I mean, I, I think I've been doing, like, I have days that are pretty good, but then things have been happening or, you know, work stuff happens. And I start to notice that kind of like, I, I'm the kind of person who feels it like in their throat and their chest a little bit. And it just mm -hmm. like this, like, yeah, I'm feeling it. I'm feeling a little bit of anxiety. And so, yeah, I, I'm one of those people that, yeah, I need to do something. Sometimes it's, I need to calm down and I need some rest. And so yes. then I'm like, you know what, I'm done. So I'm either going to talk to a friend or I'm going to watch a good show and I'm going to do, you know, I'm just going to chill out. But often it is the physical activity or for me, like, if I'm feeling anxious because I'm like, shoot, I was supposed to get like six things done today, which yes. is totally unrealistic, but I'm like major things. I'm like, I really need to do that. If I start doing at least one and I'm like, okay, just remember like tomorrow you'll be happy you did this one thing, you know? Yes. And so when yes. I take action, it really helps me kind of calm down. Um, but I agree that there's like, I, I have to find that balance for myself because I do go, go, go. And then all of a sudden I'm like, yeah, I, I literally am doing nothing. Like I've already meal planned. I've already done the thing. Like husband, your turn to cook. Like I'm done. Right. I am right. sitting here on this couch and I am claiming this territory as mine. Yep. Well, <laughs> and frankly, something... I run out of shows at this point. <laughs> <laughs> but something you said that's so interesting and true is um, I think I continue to have these expectations for how much I can get done in a day that are based on pre-quarantine life. Yes. <laughs> and they're just different now, especially for the parents out there. Like you definitely know what I'm talking about. But I think that I have had to look at it and say, okay, I have to lower my expectations. I have fewer hours to work right now. I have more hours that I need to spend in entertaining the kids or, you know, just keeping the household moving or whatever. But I still, to have some sort of daily expectations makes a tremendous difference in how I feel. So even if I'm lowering those, like I still wake up and I have my to-do list and I'm still like, these things need to get done today. And it might be a way smaller to-do list and it might not sound as exciting to me as what I could have done five weeks ago but it's still just doing those couple of things. And I often, I like to kind of front load some successes. And I think what helps a lot of us really, especially if, you know, you're one of our therapists, friends working with clients, like help people front load some success early in the day. I think one of the challenges, I know I see it for me, if I don't keep to some sort of a normal schedule of like waking up, getting dressed, you know, working out, whatever I'm going to do around the same time, doesn't have to be like, you used to get up at 4.30 to go to the gym and you still need to do that now when you've lost your commute into work or whatnot. But if you're used to working out in the morning or if you're used to doing, maybe you have, you know, maybe you do a five minute meditation in the morning or there's just something that you do like a reading or something that you like to do that grounds you, keep that up right now because front loading those successes, it gives life that little bit of normalcy, but it can also just help your mood tremendously. And it helps keep you in that mode of being like, okay, you know, all is not lost. My life still has a lot of the same normal things, even if some of the other things have disappeared. So I think it's really important just to be looking at that and saying, well, how can I front load my day? How can I do something that's going to make me feel good right there early in the day? Yeah. And I, I think I agree. Like I think of it as like, sometimes we have this like linchpin habit where like that one habit can really impact like our mood. Yes. And it is great if you can do it first thing. I will attest to one, I am sleeping way later. Although I feel very proud because I, it was getting out of hand. Like I was sleeping till 10 because I wasn't sleeping at night. This is the problem, oh, right? right? Yeah. So I was like, I need to sleep. So I would sleep till 10. And I'm going to give myself that. But I started, I know what things are impacting my sleep. So I did that. So I've been waking up at nine. I'm like, yeah, I'm so adulting. But, and I do do the Facebook thing right in the morning. I know you shouldn't, oh, I'm, I know. I'm doing oh, it right yeah, now. Exactly, I need to ease into exactly. the day. I'm like, let's not rush into this day. But, <laughs> but the one thing, you know, for me, it's sleep, right? That one habit that makes such a difference, which is why I allowed yeah. myself to sleep late and yeah. like, we'll just do everything later. Everything's kind of been pushed back a little bit. And I had to give myself that long-term. I know that's not ideal for me, but my habit has been drinking coffee outside in the morning. Oh, that's because, so nice. Yeah, because I'm like, I get the sun, I get to be outside. It's oh, like quiet that. and we have a beautiful view. We're very lucky to have a beautiful view. And yeah, so it's little things like that. But I agree, 
my to-do list, I can remember the first, I think it was the first or second week of quarantine that I posted like, okay, this is, I'm going to, I'm going to be more realistic than I've ever been. I'm only going to do three things in a day. And I wrote my three things. I can't even do the three things. Like, <laughs> right. Well, because the time three things have like 10 components each. Exactly. You know? yeah. too, it's too much because I'm not counting. I don't count client sessions. I don't count meetings right. with people. I don't right. count these things as my things, right? right. These right. are like, I can make appointments. I can show up. That's no problem. It's right. those to-do list things that I'm like, oh, I really do need to do that. And they're, they genuinely need to be done. Yeah. And I realize like, I can't, I don't have it in me. Like post all of this stuff, my energy is just much lower. So I do yeah. think it's important to give yourself a lot of grace in that and be really, really thoughtful about like, it's okay. So this, the goal of this is not to beat yourself up. Like you need to be productive. I right. think that's bullshit, but I do right. think I'm seeing a lot of people like engaging in habits that are probably leading them down a bad path. <laughs> yeah. You know, I'm sure we can all like, we hear that and we're all like, oh yeah. <laughs> <You know? laughs> well, it's only you guys. I mean, I'm doing it right. So, <laughs> <laughs> but no, I think it's so true. You know, it's funny. I was talking to a friend just yesterday and she was saying how she had read something and I'm like, oh, that's probably so true where we're probably seeing a lot of alcoholism develop right now, unfortunately during this time. And the impact of it might not really be seen until three to five years out because that might be the point where people start seeking help for it. But like you and I were saying, I love, there's so many funny memes right now about, you know, how much weight everybody's going to gain in quarantine and how much everybody's going to drink in quarantine. And like the memes are hilarious. And then you're like, okay, but don't actually everybody do that. <laughs> you know? so you're like, okay, but try not to actually do that. You know? <laughs> but yeah. it's but like, you get it. And especially now, and I think the challenge is, at least for me, I can tell you my thought process in the beginning much like you, I saw what was happening. I kind of like saw what was coming down the pike. And I was like, whoa, people need leadership. People are scared. Like I'm going to jump into action. My natural instinct was like, how can I help people? How can I lead? How can I give advice? How can I get out there? So I was right away trying to do videos, trying to write blogs, trying to get out there in front of this thing and help out the therapists who follow me. And that felt really good for a while. And then it got to the point where I was like, okay, well, that's tiring. <laughs> you know, like we can only lead for so long. Like we can only kind of hold up everybody for so long. And so that in itself, as much as that's my natural instinct, I have to allow that there are going to be days or weeks where I'm more low energy and then it'll pick back up and more low energy and it'll yeah. pick back up. And, you know, there's a reality to that. And I think to your point of the people who, uh, there's like the people who, you know, like the, I think Gwyneth Paltrow was like, everybody should learn seven languages. And that's where a lot of this whole thing started off. But, I know, you know I try to always take her advice. <laughs> <laughs> You're like her biggest fan. Um, <laughs> she knows but, everything. <laughs> but, you know, the reality is I, I feel busier than ever right now because of everybody being home all day and feeling mm -hmm. like I have to be teacher mom and all of these things. Like I feel busier than ever, but I do have friends who are single or don't have kids and maybe work has slowed down for them and they are bored to tears. Like they are bored. Duh. And so the needs right now are so different. And so in some ways, posting anything that's shaming anybody for how they're reacting is so silly because our life situations are going to be so different. And, the and I agree. That's yeah. the thing. I totally agree with if you don't put, I, I, I see so many people putting all this pressure on themselves to do all the things or to do everything right, yeah. or to be the super parent or the super, you know, business owner, the super spouse or whatever. And it's like, no, like that's not it at all. Like, I don't want that. We want realistic expectations right. and probably you need to cut those in half, <laughs> right, right. you know, especially if you're type A, but it's also understanding there are some people like they would have such high anxiety if they didn't do something. Yeah. And I, I love that you point out that our circumstances are so different. Cause I, I too, I feel like I, my days are full. Like I, there is plenty for me to be doing and I know other people who, you know, because of their work situation or whatever, they really have a lot of free time in the day. And so they're, that's too, like you're saying, that's too much time just sitting there, like with nothing yeah. to occupy. So yeah. you've got to figure it out for yourself. And I'm, I'm not shaming anybody, whatever choice you make, but it's more about, let's just, let's just be aware though, that yeah, like there are some things we, we might be doing that aren't really helping ourselves. Like we know we'll say, oh, I know. 
and then we do it anyway. I'm guilty right. of that. Right. No, it's so true. And I think, uh, yeah, completely. Mm -hmm. Just this morning, one of my clients had written a piece and it was great. And it was like, sometimes you just need to hear those things in the moment. Like I went and I checked it out because it was my client. She'd written it and posted it, like put it up on a local group. And it was just sort of a uh, mindfulness piece, like mindfulness for the moment. And it was so funny because her first tip was like, just stop right now and take three breaths. And, you know, I'm doing my morning thing where I'm zipping through. And I read that and I was like, oh, right. <laughs> like, when was the last time I took a deep breath? You know, you yeah. like have that moment that catches you where you're like, yeah, I actually do want to be mindful about this. I think this is random, but I mean, anybody who wants to take up this idea, I think one of the most creative things any of us can be doing right now that's also so useful is journaling this time, journaling this really unique time in history. Like, what was it like for you, for your family, for your experience? I started a Google Doc where I was just sort of doing, it's nothing fancy, it's just like a summary of kind of what we did that day or that week and what was going on. And then I'm inserting photos that I've taken. Cause I'm like, you know what? Someday my kids are little, they might not remember much of this, but someday I want them to be able to look back and be like, oh, hey, to their own kids, you know, I lived through that time and this is what my mom wrote down and these are the pictures that we took and look, there's the playground with police tape around it and there's the people in masks and like just all of the really unique parts of history that are happening right now, whether we like it or not, <laughs> that we're all living through and that really is the defining moment now for people like you and I of, of our generation, of our lifetime. Absolutely. Like, this will really take over as the defining moment of our lifetime. What I like about that example is it really illustrates about knowing who you are. Like you are, I mean, that's like the writer in you, the person, yeah. you're like the person in the family. I just forgot what they're called, but they're the ones like the historians, yeah. the ones that <laughs> hold the history for the family. Yeah. And then there's like, for me, I was like, uh, that's not going to help with my level of denial. Like, I don't want to, <laughs> I was like, I'm counting on Facebook to like document this stuff for me. Like that sounds so hard, <laughs> but that's the thing. You got to know yourself. Cause I, I would, I would love somebody to do that for me. And then I can be doing something else like coloring in a you know, coloring books or something. <laughs> Those are great too. Those are awesome too. I know. Well, I was watching like YouTube videos because I was trying to get some creative stuff to do with my kids. And I was watching videos, figuring out like, what can we do where it's sort of just abstract painting type stuff where you don't have to be artistic, but you can do it. And you know, it's hard because then you go and you go, okay, where can I get the supplies? Oh, well, no supplies will be delivered until like May 31st. Okay. Well, you know, so I was like, okay, what can I do right now? Just for me, at least that doesn't require anything except a Google doc. So, yeah, but I no, do think, hard. yeah, and anything, I, like I said, again, anything that feels creative to you that just gets your brain out of the moment, you know, there's all the basics that people can be doing. There are mindfulness, breathing, uh, limiting your exposure to news. Like I've had to tell people, don't send me all these sad stories. Like I can't, I have to limit how oh, many absolutely. sad stories I can You're consume. sending them to you? I would be like, dude, what's up with that? <laughs> right, like, I can find enough. them on my own. Thank <laughs> <Exactly>. you. <laughs> My Facebook feed. Yeah, it's, it's the entire <laughs> thing. It's the only thing right now on the news anywhere is this. So yeah, it is, you know, it's an intense time for everybody. And I think, I don't know, I think being able to honor again, yes, if you need to sit on the couch and if you need to sit on the couch for a couple days and if you're really frozen in fear, absolutely, everybody's gonna go through that at some point during this and we're all gonna hit it at different points. But I just think again, to raise the red flag from the therapist's point of view, you do it too long, you are basically mimicking the situation of the behaviors of depression and you really can just run yourself down that road. And to me right now, anything that we can do, the the world is a very difficult place to live in right now for the whole yeah. world. So anything that we can do to avoid finding ourselves there is powerful. And just said she's aged. That's pretty funny. Right? <laughs> I feel you. And that's exactly. the thing. That's where, and again, going back to this from the therapist point of view, I think what concerns me is this is like when we say limit the amount of news you're watching, because we know that it does actually create paranoia and skews negative. And as human beings, we already skew negative. So we need right. to be mindful of that. I know you're still going to do it. Try to find a healthy way to do it. But honestly, if you're starting to feel really low, you have to stop. This is where you have to take responsibility as an adult and you have to stop. The same would go with drinking. Like you said, 
it's very hard because it's a way to numb out, but it also like numbs out all the good stuff too. Yeah. And it's a central nervous system depressant. So yeah. it will actually make you depressed. Right. So you just have to find that balance for you and know, like, am I in a range that feels okay? Or do I need to get on top of this? And then the other thing is, I see a lot of people talking about they're really struggling and they're feeling low and, you know, they're feeling overwhelmed and wanting to take a break from like social media or other things. And it's like, but you're not reaching out to therapists, like reach mm -hmm. out. That's what we're here for. Exactly. And I know it's exactly. hard, but it's not like you have to make this long-term commitment. Sometimes, you know, you just need to call and talk to somebody and you do these little things to make yourself feel better and to get through this. Cause it is really tough. It is really you know? tough. And, and, and there, there were days where like I had a rough couple of days cause you know, like work stuff going on and, other kinds of stressors. And I was like, well, I wonder if I should call my therapist again. Cause yeah. like, I feel like I just need that tune up sometimes when you're having those low days and then, you know, you might go like weeks feeling pretty good. So, uh, Ginger was asking our thoughts on CBD oil. You know, I don't know much about it. I definitely know a lot of people that use it successfully for anxiety. I can't speak from personal experience, but I definitely know a lot of people use it successfully. I know that there are some really reputable companies out there that as far as I know, are continuing to ship during this time. I suppose that's always a question mark for any company, but um, I've definitely heard just anecdotally people I know who use it and find it helpful. I don't yeah. know, have they studied the addictiveness of that at all? I don't know. Well, because there's no THC in it, it's and just the CBD oil. It's yeah. not addictive, but um, I exactly, I was going to say anecdotally, I know many yeah. people who use it and are really, that it really helps them. It. it helps them either with pain, physical pain, which causes yeah. a lot of stress and anxiety, or it helps with anxiety. And it's just, it's actually part of their routine, just like doing like for people who do these little things that kind of bring down the anxiety, just little bits, like mm -hmm. Um, you know, like diffusing uh, essential oils and mm -hmm. doing calming things in meditation and these practices that help you kind of calm your nervous system. Yeah. So from that standpoint, it seems very useful. I've had many clients that swear by it. Um, and I think some who like there was one they had a, it was something like a chocolate with CBD and melatonin, and it really helped them sleep when they were really struggling with sleep. I have actually tried the products before, but I'm really sensitive to things. So I felt kind of weird after. So That's I just, much. I stick to magnesium and melatonin myself. Yeah. Um, but I, I wanted to try, there was a, there was like a balm that helped with like back pain. So that I did try and oh. I really like that, but the ingestibles for me, I'm super sensitive. So <laughs> yeah. Oh, and Ginger's saying I'm going to light my fire pit tonight. That's awesome. Yes. Oh, that's, so, and again, that's you're so awesome. outside yeah, and yeah. I think there's something, well, make me sound like a pyro, but I like something very soothing about fire. <laughs> like the <laughs> earth elements. I find it soothing. I'm from Minnesota. A, a good, a good bonfire is just totally. your happy place. I don't know totally. what to say about that. <laughs> yeah. No, I think that's amazing. And I think anything that you can do that's going to help you feel more centered and grounded right now yeah. is hundred percent the way to go. And don't take any shame or shade from anybody else <laughs> for doing yes, it. <laughs> exactly. So again, you do you. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> except for when you're actually <laughs> making yourself depressed. So. <laughs> uh, so I don't know, is there anything else that you feel like would be helpful for your audience or anybody watching that has questions specifically or things you're going through or things that you got a couple of therapists here to brainstorm with that we might be able to help you out with? Yeah, we, yeah, exactly. Around anything around, yeah, how you're coping, stress management, yeah. anxiety, feeling depressed, those kinds of behaviors. I'm exhausted by people making you feel like you have to invent something. Do you mean invent something like you have to do something super creative and like, you know, learn a language and all this stuff like we were talking about earlier or something different? I definitely get it. Like I get that feeling of, Hey, I'm just treading water here. So maybe don't add anything. <laughs> like maybe don't give me a weight to carry while I'm doing that right now. Yeah. <laughs> We're just gonna, I think, you know, I'll say this as people might be typing in their questions. There are two podcasts that I think are excellent right now. Uh, one is the happiness lab and she's fantastic. This is the woman who teaches that most popular course ever at Yale. And the course itself is free online right mm. now. I think it's Coursera, I think is the it's website. Harvard though, right? Harvard. I thought it was Yale. I thought it was Yale. Oh, That's I, one of those. I, 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 but anyway. You could be right. I just, <laughs> 
so she has a podcast and it's literally all about the science of happiness. And I think her podcast was on break, but she came back because of COVID and she's doing a whole COVID series. And I love the podcast anyway. The ones that she's doing that are unique to COVID are fascinating, especially if you're kind of like a neuroscience geek, like a lot of us therapists are, because it's really talking about like, here is what we have studied that actually creates lessened anxiety or that actually creates feelings of joy or whatnot. And so it's great. And then the other person who has gained my respect so tremendously during this time is Brooke Castillo. Her podcast is called The Life Coach School Podcast. And she is a, you know, multimillionaire life coach, probably like the first biggie big life coach out there doing it. And I always thought her podcast was good. You know, it's a big podcast, but she has started doing a whole COVID series and I have found them to be fantastic. Like I find myself so impressed by the work that she's doing around helping people manage their thoughts and about the fact that the reality is that most of us right now, we are feeling anxious because of what we imagine might happen in the yes. future. And that is 100% me. Like I look around, I'm like, I'm in my house. We're here. We're safe. We're healthy. Everything's fine. We, you know, everything is actually relatively normal in the grand scheme of things. But man, if I let my brain have 20 minutes to itself, <laughs> I'm picturing death and destruction and like every possible thing that could possibly go wrong. And, you know, she, her whole thing is about managing your thoughts, which is so helpful anyway, just to have a procedure and a structure for, but also just recognizing that really what what we're going through can be solved with a lot of mindfulness because in the moment you're probably okay. Like in the moment, you're probably alive. You're probably breathing. You might have a lot of fears about the future, but you're probably actually okay right now. And so coming back to that moment again and again, I know it's incredibly helpful for me. I'm sure most therapists would tell you the same and yeah. that really we have to keep recognizing like it's just a fear. It might never even happen. It's just a fear. I, in, my, in my case, I can say most of my fears most likely will never even happen. Yeah. My brain just wants to get nervous about things in advance because it's a normal functioning human brain. That's just like how we're else. wired. Exactly. And that's where like that that saying, like, whatever you focus on expands. So if yeah. you're focusing on things you're grateful for, and f the, the things that are actually good and okay for you right now, that's what you will focus on It expands, like you you start to notice more of that. If you're focusing on the negative, you're absolutely that's going to expand, and then you're going to have the anxiety. And so yeah, those are great resources. And that absolutely is, I think most therapists would agree with that. It's like we have impact we can impact the things we think about. Mm -hmm. We it's we really That's don't, it. it's harder <laughs> to have an impact on your feelings. It, usually as you change your thoughts, it changes your feelings, yeah. right? You know, and there are other ways to that, but I, that's a big piece of it is like, that's why if you're, I'm watching an, or I'm reading another news article that makes me anxious and I start to dwell on that, then right. I start to think these thoughts and then I start to feel more anxious. And that's right. why if you're exposing yourself to something else, it helps calm you. So going to one of the questions, uh, about eating bad foods. Absolutely. So there's a reason. I mean, there actually is a reason, biological reason why you do that mm -hmm. because you get little dopamine hits and yeah. that makes us feel good. And yeah, I think that's the thing. I know some people who are being super healthy and like, you know, maintaining their healthy diet and doing so great. And I'm so impressed by them. And I, tr I tried, I'm going for like the 90%, but right. I keep saying like my best self went shopping last week. So then just yesterday I went to the grocery store and it was like all junk food. I said, <laughs> I was dying. I'm like, I need, this is a rough week. I need some cake. I need some wine. Right, I need like, right. I need some stuff like, <laughs> but it's, it's a balance. Like I'm, I'm trying to do it like 90%. But if you understand that's what's happening. My brain yeah. needs that dopamine hit. There are other ways to get it, but you have to decide like how much effort do you want to put into that? <laughs> right, right, right. And what's most important to you right now? Yeah. Um, and Ginger's also saying maybe some people are putting on a smiling face, focusing on happy things, but it's not real. <laughs> All these buff people working out on Instagram are making me crazy. That's hilarious. Yeah. You know, and again, I respect people for trying to step up into roles of leadership at that moment. So if you are like an Instagram workout person, by all means, step up and keep inspiring your people. Like, go for it. We <laughs> know again, it does help. Not, it does. <laughs> but like, if you're not an Instagram workout person, 
person and you don't want to follow that person for a while, you don't have to. Like if it's making you feel bad, just click that right off. You I don't have to do that. I sometimes <laughs> enjoy watching them work out while I'm like eating something really delicious. Like I feel <laughs> like a, it's that's part of my rebel like you know, personality that's, awesome. that's like, meh, I'm going to do it this way. <laughs> yes. But you are normal. Like there's nothing wrong with you and you're just coping. And that's the thing you, you know, I think a lot of us are going to come out of this with some PTSD because this is a, yeah. this is a trauma that's like ongoing. Yeah. And yet at the same time, if it doesn't feel good to label it, you don't have to think like, oh, I'm a damaged person now because I'm craving chocolate or I keep eating chocolate chip cookies every night or whatever I mean, it is. It is normal. You're not damaged, you're normal. And you. it may be that once we start coming out of this and you get back to your natural habits, you're gonna be just fine. But yeah. so, you know. Well, and I think the kind. reality is that most of us, we have coping skills that serve us in our everyday lives, right? Like we have learned coping skills to keep us at whatever our baseline maintenance level of happiness or okayness is in everyday life. We have now hit a situation in the world where every single one of us has had our coping skills overwhelmed because yeah. this is more fear, more anxiety, more unknown than any of us have had to prepare for really. And yes, maybe if you were like, in the army and in a war zone, you have dealt with this level of stress before, but then to see it on a worldwide scale and to all be going through it at the same time, that changes everything. And so the reality is like, like Amber said, you know, maybe you're wanting the eating sugar for the dopamine hit or having some wine because it's going to help relax you. That's because your current coping skills are overwhelmed because you're normal, <laughs> like because yes. everything about you is working correctly. Your coping skills are just overwhelmed. Overwhelmed. And there is an interesting invitation in here for all of us to say, okay, wow, here I am. Clearly my coping skills are overwhelmed because I just want to like lay around and overeat and over drink and over worry all day long. So what, what is a better version of me? What would a slightly better version of me choose to do today? And I won't even say the best version of me because I don't feel like that's accessible right now in the current <laughs> everything going on. But like, if there were a slightly better version of me, what would she tell me? Or if, you know, you take that exercise of like, what would your inner 80 year old wise old crone tell you to do right now? What would she say? What would she say to you right now? Would she be like, and maybe she would be like, no, seriously, lay on the couch for a month. Like, you're good. Don't worry. You need this. Maybe she, she would. She might say, stop calling me a crone. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> like, what's up with that? You know? Surprise. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, maybe she would say, like, hey, you know what? Have a glass of wine every night. Just have one. Just have one. You know, that you're good. You're good. Like maybe you just need that little internal voice, that little internal voice that tells you like, this is the little bit of self-discipline that I'm going to stick to right now that is a bumping up of my coping skills. That is a little bit of extra. So like I see a lot of therapists right now posting about self-care, self-care, self-care. And it's funny. I tend to kind of be like, eh, self-care. Like who has time for that? Like so many of us do you know but the reality is that right now I have been like okay I am going to be like angry and grouchy at everyone if I don't get a little bit of time just alone in a room every day mm -hmm. like we all when you're living in a house with people and nobody can leave like a lot of us who are used to a lot of alone time during the day this is a whole new challenge to our coping yeah. skills and we just need to figure out like where is the boundary in here where I can still be sane where I can still be myself where I can still be like pleasant when I'm doing homework with the kids you know and not be like just do it <laughs> you know yeah. like what do I need to be able to be as like bubbly as the kindergarten teacher would be normally. <laughs> so. oh, really? See, I have this vision that I'm going to take up smoking and I'm going to be like, mm, just forget about it. It's all right. Like, <laughs> never mind. But I would say what you were already talking about you're doing is self-care. I think recognizing you can't have the to-do list you used to, yeah. like right now during this time, it's not possible. The like jumpstart in the morning, those are, that's self-care. Like yeah. all of that, like having those boundaries and doing things for ourselves. Sometimes self-care is sitting on the couch, watching movies all day with your kids or whoever you're with, or, or if you're by yourself and just like enjoying yourself and being chill and not putting yeah. pressure on yourself. And sometimes self-care is like, uh, I'm going to have to do laundry and take that shower because right. it's been three days and right. you know, people are starting to notice. <laughs> so like, you know, you, that's, it's all, so it, it really varies, you right. know, and 
like you were saying, there are days where I'm like, I'm going to tap into my inner Charles Bukowski and just like, I just want to drink a whole bottle of wine and just like be really or anybody who gets that reference. He's like my favorite author. So. <laughs> I, was say, I thought that you were like, <laughs> I like all day. <laughs> I'm just, yeah, I'm just going to be like a total lech. And then it's like, okay, but now today I'm like, I'm going to be that, Business you know, a super yeah. awesome person who like meal plans. And, but I do that. I meal plan because it reduces my stress. Yes, like because totally. I also love food and I'm like, I know what my, oh, I get to fantasize all day. Like, oh, tonight I'm going to have, you know, prime rib or whatever it was. Uh -huh, and, uh -huh. You know, so like, I know exactly what's coming. That makes me feel good. And so yeah. like, that doesn't mean I'm trying to be like super mom or super whatever, because right. I meal plan, I meal plan out of necessity and because it, you know, helps me fantasize all day. <laughs> there you go. Perfect. <laughs> awesome. Wow, this was fun. Any other questions? I don't see any other questions that came in. Yeah, no, I, and I think, um, you know, like, we, I, hopefully people are getting that we're saying the, you know, do what you need to do. I, I think it is very normal. It's normal for us to feel down because this is a roller coaster. We have those yeah. days that are up, days that are down, and sometimes nothing happens. Like you might not have like, oh, well, why do I feel down today? You just do. Right. But there's a difference right. between feeling down and being clinically depressed. And so yeah. I think why we wanted to talk about this is do the things that take care of yourself and that feel good to you or right to you so that you don't end up in that place where you really are in a clinical depression, which is a totally different animal than having days where you feel down or yeah. low, right? Yeah. yeah, totally. It's funny. And as you were talking, it was kind of flashing me back. There's a book and a lot of people might know it. It's a very old book, The Artist's Way by Julia Cameron. Yes. And um, it's it right a really, here. yeah. Oh, do you really? That's yeah. so awesome. Uh, <laughs> I used to work with her when I lived in Taos, New Mexico. I worked with her at her Artist Way retreats and they were amazing and they were wonderful. And if I'm remembering correctly, one of the exercises in that book was something along the lines of writing down like a list of maybe 20 things that used to bring you joy, even when you were a kid. Things yeah. like maybe uh, swinging on a swing set used to bring you joy or blowing bubbles or just like really simple, those types of like small everyday pleasures. And maybe it's stuff that brings you joy now that's a simple everyday pleasure. Or you can even go back to childhood. Like when do you remember laughing the most or having the most fun? And I think something like that right now, giving yourself permission to not worry too much, to not feel like the state of the world is your responsibility today, to not feel like if you miss a single news article, the world's going to fall apart because you really need to be educated and on top of this. Like a lot of us do have that instinct inside of us. Like I, the world is going to fall apart if I don't stay on top of every bit of new information coming out of the government. And it is exhausting AF. And so anything you can do right now to be like, how can I give myself just some pleasure, just some fun? I know the kid, we got Disney plus, you know, the channel. Yeah, yeah. And so most like three or four nights a week lately, we're watching old Disney movies. Like the yeah. kids have never seen them. I haven't seen them forever. And so it's been just like that little bit of something joyful to look forward to at the end of the day. Although I shouldn't say joyful with Disney movies because the parent always dies. Oh my always. God. In oh my every God. single one. I'm like, seriously, again, <laughs> I forgot that another parent died in this movie too. But <laughs> the basis of the hero's journey. Hello. Right. <laughs> so funny but you know so it's like stuff like that I'm like oh there's actually real pleasure in seeing these like 40 year old movies 30 year old movies like yeah. just getting to sit with the kids and show that to them so just those little things we've been doing that too and um we we were always we love movies anyway as a family but we've been doing those movie nights where I even bought like boxes of candy and so like we'll make popcorn and have oh, the candy awesome. and we're watching we're all just kind of snuggling together and we watch movies and yeah, it's so nice. It's a nice little break from everything. And, yeah. you know, it's, it's, it's those little things you have to do for yourself. But I love, hopefully I didn't look crazy because my kids walked into my office and they were like chalking and I kept pointing like, get out, get out. <laughs> and I was like, so get I might've looked crazy because I was like, get out. I was trying to give them the look. Um, I did not lock my door. Clearly I am not learning in this COVID time. I don't even have a door. So I feel you. I've been on podcasts since this started where I have to be like, quiet down. Oh, I can't even imagine not having a door because already I could hear them above me. I can, they're coming in, they're infiltrating. Like, I think, you know, now that we're saying this is kind of going back on a different tangent, but I think one of the hard things for me as far as coping goes is 
Like I'm somebody who like, I love cleaning the house when no one's here. Like I like being able to clean it and then know like every inch is perfect and then have people come and destroy it. Like, I don't want it destroyed as I'm going. It really yeah. irritates me. <laughs> and so then I realized like, well, if I wait for no one to be in the house to clean the house, the house will never be clean. Exactly. So it's like having to, and, and I'm telling you this is, I mean, I'm in my forties. So like, I've been doing this a long time. I'm like, yeah to really have to change those kind of preferences I have, those habits, it's effortful, yeah, right? It and so it's a little exhausting. And, yeah. and you know, there's many reasons why we're feeling exhausted. And we've talked about these in many of the series of videos, you know, the trauma that we're feeling, the the having to be online in the blue lights, like being on, on, you know, screens all the time. There's a lot of things that are making this extra exhausting, not mm -hmm. having those coping mechanisms and then having to really shift the way you typically do things. It is a drain. And so I, I guess I really do hope that people are being kind to themselves. Like there's nothing wrong with you if you're feeling this, like it's, it's mm -hmm. normal. It's hard. It's really hard. And that's why you have to do those things and reach out to those people. But if you're talking to people, all the people I'm talking to are, you know, having like similar stories. Like I was having a conference with somebody yesterday and they're like, I started drinking diet Coke again after three years. And I was like, amen. Like, I, I know it's like, I know it's terrible for you. Yeah, yeah. And yet I'm like, I need caffeine in a cold beverage. <laughs> like I need some happiness. I need joy. Yeah, yeah, totally. Totally. That's so true. It's funny as you're talking, it's reminding me of, she talks a lot in the happiness lab podcast that we just talked about earlier, but all the science about how, um, basically we get decision fatigue over the course of the day. And when we are in that situation where we're being forced to make decisions all day that, you know, people think of it as like your willpower runs out, but really in a lot of ways, and like, yes, you can call it willpower if you want to, in a lot of ways, it's decision fatigue. So you come to the point in the day where you have made 178 decisions that are way outside the realm of normal because your whole life is flipped upside, upside down right now. And somebody cracks open a Diet Coke and you're like, I cannot make the no decision right now. Like I, I my brain is too fatigued. I can't, oh. you know, I can't make one more decision. Give me the Diet Coke. And then that becomes, you're just, you're too mentally exhausted by it. And I do think, and it probably is part of why I find for myself that keeping some semblance of my normal morning routine makes a big difference because as soon as I start giving myself choices in that, like, well, you don't have your first meeting until noon. You know, you could just take your shower, get ready at like 11. As soon as I start giving myself choices, I'm actually mentally wrestling all day and I'm forcing myself to make a lot more decisions, which is going to make me more tired and have less willpower by the afternoon or by the end of the yeah. day. And because we're all presented with so many unusual situations right now, you're you're making extra decisions anyway. Like it's, you, everything is out of your normal routine and schedule. So yes. anything that you can do to keep it in there and to, to uh, relieve the number of decisions, like you were saying with meal planning. Yeah. If you know what meals are happening tomorrow, that's amazing. You have just relieved like 180 food choices you would have standing in front of your fridge going, what should I eat? Should I eat that? Exactly. Should I eat that? I don't know. Maybe that, you know, no, you've just gotten rid of that. So that eliminates some of the decision fatigue. It makes your day a little smoother and and then it gives you the willpower when somebody, whatever your vice of choice is, the Diet Coke, whatever, like it gives you a little bit more mental energy to make that decision. I love that you said it like that. I hadn't been thinking of it that way, but it makes so much sense that when something is a non-negotiable, yeah. like before all this, going to the gym every morning was a non-negotiable. My husband and right. I just did it. We dropped off the kids. We went. And when it's a non-negotiable, it's not a decision. It's just yeah. something you do. It's do your it. routine, right? So Brushing that's thing. why the routines yep. are very helpful. But I hadn't been thinking about it from a decision fatigue standpoint. Yeah. I, and I love that because I've even been talking to people about, you know, depending on your situation or what's going on. Like for me, there are times at the end of the night, like my husband would ask me like, oh, you know, what do you want to eat? Or what do you, do you want this or this? And I'm like, I'm, I'm done. I can't make more decisions today. Yeah. Like you need to be in charge. And now I can just say, what's on the menu plan? <laughs> like yeah. literally, cause I did it for like three weeks at a time also to minimize shopping. Yeah. Right. 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 But, but it was like, 
I, I, and I think it's important to communicate that to your partner. Like I'm at a place where I cannot make any more decisions because yes. I, I had gotten some new bowls because we had some broken ones and he's like, well, where are these going to go? I was like, I, I not yeah. tonight. I'm not making that right. decision tonight. Like right. I can't, <laughs> like, I just, I literally right. have it's nothing left. Wonder, to but it's not. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> well, it's interesting. Um, Obama one time, somebody, some reporter or somebody had asked him like, why do you basically always wear the same shirt, the same suit, like every day? And he said, do you know how many decisions I have to make in a day? Exactly. What I wear can't be one of them. Yes. And it's that's exactly the that's, same thing. That's like Mark Zuckerberg does that. Yeah. Uh, uh, yeah. What's his bucket? Bill. No, what's his name? I just forgot his name. Steve Jobs. Did he? Steve do Jobs, thank you. Oh, there you go. <laughs> you were in my head. Yeah. I know. And there's something to that. So limiting it. And that's why ch not changing out of my pajamas actually really works for me because then I don't have to think about no it. <laughs> about what to wear. It's perfect. Exactly. Yeah. It's so true, though, isn't it? There's just, yeah. you know, there's so many weird decisions to be made right now, even to the point of, I'm sure you know this too. Like as a parent, I get asked for snacks 178 times an hour. Pretty much. <laughs> even each of those is a decision. What have they eaten yet? Have they eaten this? Have they eaten that? Can they eat? When is lunch? Like even each of those becomes additional decisions that you're making all day. You know, so little stuff like that, it adds up. Yeah. And that is why at the end of the day, my friend sent a meme and it was funny. It was like two bottles of wine is the new one glass of wine. And it's like, <laughs> that's why at the end of the day, people are like, oh, two bottles, no problem. Exactly. You know, no, that so we're all fatigued. We are. I love, I love, I hadn't thought of it that way, but I absolutely love that. I'm so yeah. grateful you shared that because that is a component to it. And I think like naturally I, yeah, I was doing things to, to kind of help that because I, I think I always get to decision fatigue anyway, between having three children yeah. and running a couple of businesses and like all this other, it's like a lot. Right. Totally. And so like at the end I'm like, okay, I'm done. But yeah. that's where, like, even with the kid thing, I think I, my, my thing is they're like, Oh, can I have this, you know, whatever donut right. or snack or chocolate? And I'm like, have you had lunch? Like, it's always, I always do that. And then it's like, have you had dinner? Yeah. I'm not going to make that decision. Yeah, if they yeah. say yes, then I'm like, fine, I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> right, right, right. Right. Did you eat something healthy? Yeah, exactly. exactly. <laughs> you know, here's a banana. Now go eat that bag of Doritos. <laughs> that's, that's second breakfast. But, like, that's perfect though. Even pre-planning some stuff like that is amazing. Like, even if you said, okay, kids, while we're all stuck home together, here's the rule. Before you ask me for a snack, go check this list. Like, have you eaten a banana? Have you eaten an apple today? You know, whatever that is, it will eliminate some of the decisions for you and for them. Anything you can set up right now to do that is brilliant. Yeah. That's a good, that's a good point. I love it. So, well, I am so grateful that you came on. I knew it'd be yeah. fun. I was like, oh, this will be such a great conversation. <laughs> and, and I, and I hope, you know, I hope that people take away that we're really honoring. You have to really check in with yourself, like know thyself, but then also be mindful. Am I, am I kind of in a place where I am kind of starting to do things that I know aren't helping me and to a level that's detrimental. Not yeah. like don't shame yourself for having those days or those times where you're just like, I don't care. And I'm eating, you know, hostess for dinner. I don't, I don't, whatever it is, right, I don't right. care. But it's not about saying you have to do something. You don't have to, you get to do something. And what yeah. do you get to do? You get to choose to not learn a language and, <laughs> you know, like just, just survive. You get to do that if you want. Yeah. And you get to organize and clean your house if that's the thing that you know you want to do and come out of this, you know, feeling like, oh, okay, right. I accomplished something and it gave me something to focus on and it helped relieve my stress and anxiety. So well, listen, do that. you get to launch a new business if you want to. I have had something like 12 people just in the past week join my clinician to coach program because they're looking at it going, I have extra time. I don't have all the therapy clients I want. I want to finally use this time to launch my consulting business, my coaching business, or build an online course. Like they are using this time to build something. And I so applaud that because I'm like, go you for being conscious of the fact that you actually need something to occupy your brain right now to feel okay. Because that's very much how I'm wired too. I need something to be doing or else it's in danger land in my brain. So like I, you know, no matter what, you want to do if you are the person that maybe you're more type a normally and unplugging is the best thing you can do for yourself right now do that and if you are the person who's like oh boy i better get busy or i'm gonna go crazy then do that then do that
Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, my big thing, uh, somebody had asked that and I said, yeah, I think out of all of this, I mean, obviously I'm helping clients and this is why I even started doing the video series. I had no plan or idea. I was like, I just want to talk to great people and hopefully make people feel better or give them something that makes them feel like they're coping a little bit better with all of this. Yeah. And, um, but I was like, Oh, if I, if I could learn one thing during all this, what would it be? And I was like, you know, maybe I'm going to watch one of those YouTube tutorials and do a smoky eye one day. Cause oh, that is something go. I would never make time for in my right? regular life. <laughs> Well, that's why I was cracking up at like the hip hop dancing on TikTok. Like I would never <laughs> sit around watching hip hop dancers on really, TikTok. I love hip hop like, dancing. <laughs> like, nothing better to do. Why not? <laughs> that, I would do that. But yes, that's the thing. I'm like, okay, so I still haven't done it. I still have not watched a YouTube video makeup tutorial, but I, it, it it's like, to me, it's kind of absurd and fun. And I was like, maybe I'm going to do this. Totally. We'll see. I haven't done it yet. You'll have to, I'll have to check On your back next in. interview, you'll have I know. <laughs> the perfect smoky eye. eye. Cat thing going <laughs> way back here. Amazing. Absolutely. Again, <laughs> it goes back to, it can be ridiculous and fun. It doesn't right. have to be productive. Right. You don't have to learn a language. Sorry, Gwyneth. <laughs> but that is a life skill. The perfect smoky eye. I mean, that is a life skill that you might need. Maybe. <laughs> I mean, forward. that might be life changing and I'm just unaware. So it's right. really about figuring that out. <laughs> your next video will be like, you're, you're like, I'm changing everything now. I'm just going to do makeup tutorials all day. <laughs> yeah, I'm pretty sure <laughs> that's where my future lies. <laughs> You know, screw all this psychology. <laughs> exactly. <stuff. laughs> I spent enough years on that. Now it's just makeup and hip hop together. Uh, yes. <laughs> Uh, I know. Thank you again for joining yeah, me. And um, I would love to hear from people if there was anything helpful or if you have some kind of absolutely hysterical, fun, normal, helpful thing, whatever it is okay. <laughs> that you've been doing that's helping you cope um, let us know. Cause I would love to know, but thank yeah. you again, Katie. And, um, I've been really bad about my, my banners today, but if people want to find out more information about you, they should head on over to katyreed.com and, uh, definitely check out her stuff. Cause obviously they can tell you're a very subdued conservative person. So. <laughs> You might be the only person who can out talk me. I swear to God. <laughs> I love it. I don't know if that's good or bad. No, it's good. It's good. <laughs> okay. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Thanks, Amber. <laughs>